Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave2D and this is my video on the Nexus 5X and the Nexus 6P. So originally I was gonna split them up into two separate videos, one for each phone, but then as I used them, I realized it would just be better quality content to make one video to tie everything together. So here it is, my Nexus 5X and 6P review. Let's do it. Both of these are slightly bigger boxes than past Nexus devices, and when you pop them open, you get the devices themselves, a 15 watt charger, and a charging cable that has USB-C on both ends. The Nexus 6P also comes with a short second cable. So this cable has a USB-C on one end and a standard USB-A on the other end. And they also come with SIM tools, paperwork, and a 90 day trial of Google Music if you haven't used it before. Okay, so when images of these phones were leaked on the internet, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't like them. They looked really different from anything I'd used before and the camera humps on both of the phones, they looked really weird. But after using them for a week, they've really grown on me. I don't love the hump on the 5X or that visor thing on the 6P, but it doesn't bother me that much anymore. If you wanna keep the visor a little stealth, go for the black model, it'll kinda hide it. But if you like white or silver phones, you can always get a skin for it, right? Dbrand always makes good skins and you can get like a matte white skin for that visor, it'll probably look pretty good. The 5X is made by LG. It's made of plastic, smooth and hard finish. We didn't get soft touch this year, but it feels really well made and it's durable. So if you have small hands or if you prefer a smaller phone, this might be a better fit for you. You can easily hold it in one hand and for the most part, you can kind of use it in one hand as well. The 6P is made by Huawei and it's made from aluminum. It definitely feels and looks more premium and has chamfered edges all around it, so it's really comfortable to hold. It's about a quarter inch smaller in width than the Nexus 6 from last year, which I always thought was a little wide, so most people will be able to hold this phone in one hand, but if you wanna use it one-handed, you're gonna need some pretty big hands. Now going around the devices, on the left side, they both have a SIM slot. On the bottom, they both have USB-C charging ports. On the right side, we have volume rockers and power buttons. And the 6P has a textured power button, which I always like. And the headphone jacks are on the top for the 6P and on the bottom for the 5X. Okay, the screens. The 5X has a 1080p IPS panel covered in Gorilla Glass 3. The 6P has a Quad HD AMOLED panel covered in Gorilla Glass 4. So the 5X screen is pretty good. When you view it by itself, it looks really crisp, colors are really accurate, and the viewing angles are really good. It's not super bright, but overall, it's a really good quality screen. But then you compare it to the 6P, and this is a crazy good screen. It's a Samsung panel, and the default settings are a little oversaturated, but you put it into sRGB mode, and it's a very color accurate, super crispy screen. It's bright, and I would put this on par with the Note 5 screen. Maybe not as bright, but you're gonna love this screen. They both look like they have front-facing stereo speakers. The 6P does, sounds pretty good, just not as rich as HTC's boom sound, but the 5X is a mono speaker. The top portion is just an earpiece, only the bottom one is a speaker. It sounds similar to the 6P, just a little quieter and obviously not stereo. Okay, let's talk about the camera. They both share the same camera, 12 megapixel, laser autofocus, and for a Nexus device, the camera is superb. Photos with good lighting are excellent. Photos in dim light are pretty good. The dynamic range when it's really bright isn't great. So for outdoor shots, you get some clipping in the whites and you lose some detail. It records 4K video at 30 frames per second, which looks really nice. The 6P has better slow motion video at 240 frames per second instead of the 120 on the 5X. And the camera app feels a little quicker on the 6P, but the images between the two are really similar. Visually, I prefer the photos from the Note 5 or the G4 and the iPhone 6S, but the photos on the 6P and the 5X are right up there with like the best smartphone cameras, which is crazy, right? Considering that this is a Nexus device. The front facing cameras are five megapixel on the 5X, eight megapixel on the 6P. I know, right? I'm so good looking. They both have fingerprint sensors on the back cover, and it seems oddly positioned at first, but you get used to it quickly, and I'm at the point where I prefer a fingerprint sensor on the back. You just get way better grip on the phone as you unlock. I mean, look at this grip. You could slap someone pretty good as you unlock the phone, but when you unlock a phone with a front sensor, mm, you know what I mean? Like, it works fine. We've been using it for years, but it's just not as natural of a grip. Now one thing though, if you get a notification or if you wanna do something with the phone while it's sitting on a table, you gotta pick it up to unlock it, right? So you just gotta drill a hole in your table for your finger. Okay, so in terms of unlocking speed, I couldn't tell the difference between the two. They're both really, really fast. And they seem to be faster than the iPhone 6S, which is already super fast. 
It's an excellent sensor and it's really well integrated into Marshmallow. Speaking of which, they're both running stock Android 6.0 Marshmallow, which is basically Google's vision of what the true Android experience should be. There's no skin on the interface. There's no bloatware. There's like very few Google apps installed even. I really like it. And the best part is you get updates from Google really quickly. Like Nexus devices get updates first. So that's always cool. The 5X runs a Snapdragon 808 with two gigs of RAM. The 6P is running an 810 with three gigs of RAM. Now the 810 is, I mean, it's a little faster. It's an eight core instead of a six core. There isn't a huge difference, but it's noticeable when you run them side by side. So the two scenarios that I found with the most obvious performance differences between the phones is multitasking and the stock camera app. I mean, multitasking, it's a little quicker on the 6P, especially switching between games. And the camera app is just a lot snappier on the 6P. It's quicker to load, it's quicker to shoot, but for the most part, unless you're comparing benchmarks or something, you're not gonna get a huge difference between the two. Battery life is pretty good. I'm easily getting a day and a half of regular use on the 6P and around a day on the 5X. Charging is done with USB-C. Now, I know it's the future, but right now I don't have enough USB-C cables to make it like super convenient, but I'm close and it'll be worth it soon. Now there's no wireless charging, which is a little bit of a bummer, but the 15 watt chargers they include juice up the phones pretty fast. It takes about one hour to charge the 5X and a little over an hour and a half to charge the 6P. So it's not too bad. Okay, let's do a recap. Nexus 5X, plastic body, solid build quality. It has a single front facing speaker that sounds okay. The Nexus 6P, more premium aluminum build. It's bigger, it's heavier, and it has stereo speakers. They're louder, but they still don't sound amazing. 1080p screen on the 5X, it's pretty solid. Good colors, good viewing angles, but not super bright. Quad HD screen on the 6P, fantastic screen that's basically as good as the one on the Note 5. Five megapixel front facing camera on the 5X, eight megapixel on the 6P, a noticeable difference in image quality between the two if you care about selfies. On the back, both of them have the same 12 megapixel camera, excellent in daylight, very good in dim light, just really solid cameras. There's also fingerprint sensors back here that are super fast. And on the inside, we have batteries that'll last you about a day on the 5X and a day and a half on the 6P. This is with regular use, a Snapdragon 808 in the 5X and an 810 in the 6P. Both are strong performers and sufficient for any kind of smartphone user, except for that camera app, which is a little slow on the 5X. Storage is not expandable. You start at 16 gigs for the 5X, which will run you $380. And for the 6P, storage starts at 32 gigs, which runs you $500. Okay, closing thoughts. There's a lot to like about both of these phones, but to me, the star of the show is the 6P. If you're looking for an Android phone and you don't need expandable storage, this should be on the very top of your short list, or at least near the top. It's not the best phone in the world. I mean, there's things that aren't perfect about it, but to me, this is the best Android phone of 2015. As for the 5X, it's a good phone. It's actually a very good phone, but I feel like it's overpriced by like 80 to maybe even $100. If you paid an extra 20 bucks, you could get a Moto X Pure, and I feel like you're getting a lot more phone for the price, unless you need a really small phone because there's not that many 5.2 inch phones in 2015. If you're an Apple user, I mean, it's difficult to leave the Apple ecosystem. I understand that. But if you're interested in giving it a shot, I think these two phones are the best choices to try the Android experience out with. They're, for one, Google phones. I mean, you have a good return policy with Google. You get a couple weeks to try it out. If you don't like it, you can return it. But more importantly, you get a super stock Android experience. And that to me is most similar to like the whole stock Apple experience. That's the end of the review. Hope you guys liked it. Thumbs if you did, subs if you loved it. It's been nice. I'll see you guys next time.